All right, welcome everybody. Today I am uh, really excited because we have a guest out of Chattanooga, Tennessee, Ryan Faircloth, who has an awesome story to share and is really active and has done some things that I think are really amazing in real estate. I'm not sure uh, quite how he does them. So I know we're going to get a lot of great information and a lot of great encouragement from this interview. So thanks for being on, Ryan. I appreciate it. Yeah, thank you for having me. Yeah, glad you took the time. I've, uh, you know, seen a lot of the things you've been doing, and man, you are on the move. You are. Yeah, well, right, right now I'm at a job site, so it's kind of it might be echoey in here. I don't know. Um, but yeah, we're here working right now. Um, yeah, I mean, yeah, I'm here in Chattanooga. Have a dumpster rental company here, um, and we do houses, flip houses, and rentals, and whatever we can do with real estate. All right. So how did it start? I mean, now you're involved in a whole bunch of things and businesses, flips, rentals. How did you, how did that process get its first initial beginning? Well, it started, I can't remember if it was late nineties or early two thousands. Um, we bought a house like two doors down from our house that was in foreclosure. My wife did. She's like, I'm going to buy this house. And uh, you know, I was like, yeah, let's go ahead and buy it. And, uh, so we bought it and that was like right when we first got married somewhere around two or three years in. I don't remember, maybe five years in our marriage. I've been married 23 years. Um, well, that, that started it and we cleaned it up, fixed it, rented it. We rented it for, I don't know how long. And then next to it, it had some acreage with it. I moved in some mobile homes uh, next to it and really upset all my neighbors. <laughs> <laughs> where we are at, we don't have zoning. Uh, where I live, I'm in the country, by the way. Okay. And uh, we don't have zoning. So we, I moved into mobile homes and I used to have a furniture manufacturing company back then. And uh, I moved in some employees that needed some housing and uh, that come up from uh, Mexico. And I was like, yeah, I got, I'll move these in over here, rent these to you guys. My neighbors didn't like the mobile homes back there, but anyway, yada, yada, they stayed. I rented them and, that, and I kind of got into mobile home business a little bit back then also. Wow. So how long was it, you know, you bought the first house as a rental. How long was it from then until you're popping down mobile homes and starting to ramp up? Well, uh, I don't know. Everything's like a blur back then. Yeah. <laughs> hours. <laughs> And I had two kids, a wife, and yada, yada. Yeah. So everything's kind of a blur. But yeah, I bought those two mobile homes. When I bought those, I was like, man, I can buy these things like cheap. And um, I never paid over 2500 bucks for a mobile home. Really? And, and then it was, these are good mobile homes. I'm not talking about junk ones. These were good ones. It's the, the way I found them and how I found them. I would find people who were moving. Okay, they were, they were in a park mobile home park. So I would find people that have for sale signs on their mobile, you drive through a park, some people have put for sale signs on the end of the, in a window on their mobile home, you know, for sale. You know, I talked to them, find out the story. And what I found out was a lot of the people that were in the park did not want to sell their home to the owner because for some reason, the, uh, they didn't like the park owner or maybe they got into it with the park owner or whatever. So they didn't want to sell, they didn't want the park owner to have it. So they were like, Hey, we're moving out of here. We can't afford to move this thing. So we're going to sell it for whatever, 5,000, 6,000, 3,000. And I would be, I'd be like, I think I did pay 3,000 for one. Um, I'd be like, Hey, I got uh, $2,500 cash. If you have a title, they'd be like, so so, you know, that's, that's how I started buying them. And sometimes I would just leave them there in the park and then stick my for sale sign up or put an ad in the newspaper. Newspaper back then, not Craigslist or anything. Um, put an ad in the paper, uh, mobile home, $6,000, $8,000, and sell it sitting right there in the park. I'd pay another uh, lot rent just to make sure, you know, that it's up and up with the park owner and uh, sell it like that. But that kind of got me started in mobile homes. And then I built a small mobile home park, early 2000s, uh, about, I don't know, six miles or so from where I live. My wife and I, we found a piece of land, it's three acres. Pasture, we went in, there was no sewers. So we had to put septic tanks in. 
got where Georgia Power put in all the power poles. Uh, put up uh, it was six, it was going to be a six lot home park, and uh, got that going. Then we sold it uh, right after the crash or before the crash. Can't remember somewhere in there. Wow. So uh, mobile home that you bought, I think that's awesome. First of all, yeah, uh, that's very little effort buying a mobile home for twenty five hundred, reselling it for eight or six or whatever. But when you bought these mobile homes for twenty five three thousand. What were you renting them for when you would put them on one of your lots? I think four fifty. I think it's about four or four fifty. So, yeah, I'd move them, um, but you know, hook them up. Uh, one, one, one. I had to you know, install another tank, of course, for the sewer or septic. Um, but yeah, I'd rent. I think I rented those guys like four fifty, and they worked for me too. So I was guaranteed to get their money. <laughs> So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, sure. That's, that's a great return. You know, I don't yeah. know what the land cost, but those are good numbers for sure. Well, see, so yeah, I see the land already purchased with that house on that, uh, on yeah. that first deal. Yeah. And uh, I just moved those other two in there. But the park, yeah, I can't remember what I paid for that land. I think it was like 20 something thousand. Okay. And then I had to put the tanks. Tanks were about $4,500 a piece back then with 200 infiltrator uh driveway had to do all that you know back then i wasn't an investor i was just like hey i want to do this uh you know i didn't call myself an investor i just called my as a, i was like i think i told you earlier I, it was just like a hobby hey let's just build this i want to do try this and you know, i've never built a park or anything but i can figure stuff out yeah what was you know i think for mobile homes a lot of people here in mobile home or mobile home park and that kind of scares them or turns them yeah. off. They yeah. have all these like really hor horrible images in their head. Oh yeah, I've got what some was, of those. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> what was it like managing um, that park that you built with six units? It, it was good at first. Um, and t it's, it's like, okay, if, if I had to do it again, I would not rent the mobile homes. I'd bring them in and then owner finance them, whatever. And I'd rent a lot. Okay. Because mobile homes are built so cheap or back then, I don't know what they are today. Back, you know, I would pull in like 1980 something, your model, model mobile homes. I bring those in and they're, and they're just built so cheap. They're like two by three walls, uh, gray pipe. You gotta take all that gray pipe out and put new plumbing in. Cause if you don't, that stuff's just gonna bust all the pieces in the winter time. Mm. in the winter time you're going to have water all in the floor and those floors the, they don't put plywood in the in the decking floor deck uh, they use this stuff i call it sawdust board other it's not wafer board it's not like osb it's literally like a sawdust that's compressed and glued together so when it gets wet that stuff just buckles and bows and just warps and it's just garbage um so replace all the plumbing um i forgot where we're going with this question but uh yeah, so it sounds like the management issues with management, the yeah, weren't the, necessarily the people. It was more the the mobile homes and well, it you know, I got the mobile homes were good, and then I got one bad tenant that got on drugs. Okay, so it's a small part. He it's like almost like that one bad apple spoiled the rest of them because when this guy you know he got on drugs whatever reason he started getting money from door to door. Mm -hmm saying they need milk some bread and then this one the neighbor said knew he wasn't paying rent and I go try and collect rent and uh, he didn't have it or he wasn't there or his wife and kids were coming to the door and, he, and the kids would look at me and I felt bad for him <laughs> and uh, so yeah he he spoiled everybody because in that situation I found that like everyone knew he wasn't paying so they started being late on their rent uh, yeah. like a little community everybody knew everybody's business so uh, so my advice is if you get a bad apple, get them right out of there really quick because it, it'll spread like, like an infection. Yeah, that is good advice. And manage them. You have to manage them all the same. If, yeah. If you let one guy slide, everybody knows it. Yeah, I, they know. <laughs> Constant like that. And then yeah. Yeah, everybody expects you to let them slide. So what do you think when, you know, I really – can relate to treating it like a hobby. And I think a lot of people, when they start 
or dabble in real estate a little bit and they treat it like a hobby. What do you think? What was the jump when you suddenly treated it like a business? What was the difference? Honestly, that was about three years ago. So it was just recently. Okay. Yeah. It was just, you know, we did this and that and my wife got her broker's lot or my, or she, she became a realtor in 2009, probably the worst time to be a realtor. Um, but she made it. And then in three years, she got a broker's license, opened her own brokerage, uh, Faircloth Realty. And it's just like, and then she's like, you know, we need to do more investing. And she said, I'm tired of chasing buyers and sellers and this. And uh, so we started doing more investing, flipping, um, th you know, rentals, things of that nature. And so about three years ago, we come, hey, this is a business now. We need to treat it like a business. We're going to act like it's a business. Uh, it's, it's a business. So it's more like how seriously you take it or more how structured your goals are and, and what you're working towards. Yeah. Goals and how we structure it. Uh, it's like what we do every single day now. Mm -hmm. And I also have a dumpster rental company, as I mentioned before. Um, so that, you know, my daughter, she's kind of running, you're running the phones on that right now. And I have a driver who runs the dumpsters. We're, we're a small dumpster company, you know, I have one, 25 dumpsters. Uh, that's what the junk clean is. Junk clean. All right. So uh, I've got that. Uh, so before we buy a house, we need to clean it out or tear stuff out. I've always got a dumpster. So that, you know, that helps. I like the uh, complimentary businesses. Yeah. You know, that, that's nice. Yeah. So are you, do you service with the dumpsters? Is it just Chattanooga or bigger? Yeah, Chattanooga and surrounding areas. We go up Northwest Georgia, Chattanooga, Ringgold. Uh, yeah, those are just little areas right there. Okay. So if, if you were starting around in the late nineties and got serious a few years ago, along the way, what did people think about your investing? You know, not everybody's throwing up mobile homes on this vacant land and building a mobile home park and, you know, getting the realtor's license and brokerage. What were people kind of wondering what you were doing or what was their I don't response? Know. I, I really don't, I don't care what people wonder what I'm doing. <laughs> You know, they, they can think or wonder all they want. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. <laughs> yeah. Well, good. I just kind of do my thing and my wife, we just do it. And I don't know. I never asked them. <laughs> with working with your wife, was, was it always, did you always have a shared vision for where you were going or? No, uh, we do now though. I mean, it's great now. Um, yeah, like I said, we've been married 23 years. I think, I mean, we've always worked good together, except for when I was in the furniture business. That was kind of tough for us. And uh, and I told her, I didn't fire her, but I told her, oh. you <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, but she's like, yeah, I gotta go. So she went and got a realtor's license. Um, no, we work great together. We, uh, you know, I keep telling people, uh, teamwork makes the dream work. And Melissa and I, we're the team. Uh, she's my number one, she's my best friend. Uh, I mean, she, she does stuff that I'm not that great at and she's really good at. And then I, I there's some stuff that I can do that she's not really that good at, and, you know, so we both complement each other. That's awesome. Yeah. I love, uh, what was the phrase? Teamwork makes the dream work. Love it. That's yeah. great. Yeah. So whether that's working together with your spouse or a partner or right. contractors or whatever it is, you can't do it alone. That's yeah, <laughs> sure. So, so what deals do you like now, or what have, what have you been doing in the last few years? Uh, you know, I, I got it. We were doing single family houses, and we still do. Like I'm sitting in a single family house right now. We're doing, uh, but we're renting it out. This is for a college, so we're renting it out by the bed. Um, I can get into those details later on in a different podcast. I can't get in that right now because this is brand new for us. So I don't know where this is going to go. <laughs> yeah. Okay. They, they move in next week. So I don't know what's going to happen. Uh, I don't know if they're going to tear the walls down or what. I don't know. Um, but yeah, as far as mul like single family, multifamily, I love multifamily because I just like the way the numbers work. Um, we have four duplexes right now. Um, I do have one mobile home right now also. And then the single family home, Melissa's working on a flip. 
Um, so I like the multifamily because of numbers. The numbers is just, I, don't, I just like the numbers of them. Meaning the price compared to rents or, or what with the numbers? Well, like, you know, you got more doors per, per uh, someone moves out, you know, you can still, someone else is still paying, um, you know, per door. Like uh, we have two on one parcel. So there's four doors, you know, one person moves out, you got, you got three paying, which right now we just did an eviction this morning. My wife had to go to court for one. Um, but so now we have two doors empty and, uh, yeah, but one's been, uh, about to be occupied. So we'll have just one door empty on that one. Okay. And, uh, you know, we're looking at other stuff. I bought some land in December of last year because when I kept looking at these multifamily properties, the way real estate was so hot and the places were so inflated, prices were so inflated. It was like, man, I can build this stuff for uh, what they're trying to sell this stuff for. They're, they're wanting like 70 something, $80,000 a door. And some of the stuff was eighty, ninety thousand dollars door. And I'm like, man, I was like, I can build this. I can build brand new construction for this price in my area where I'm at. Um, because what, and the reason how I can do it is because I know, I know everybody that does this, you know, my dumpster company, I rent to this guy, I rent to this guy that does construction, that does roofing, you know, so I can get their prices. I don't have to sub this stuff out. I can be the contractor. Um, so I bought a piece of land, three acres, and I was going to build 26 units the first this year. My, I bought it in December, planning on starting in March, I think March or April, I can't remember, but COVID hit, of course, and yeah, everybody's supposed to die by now. Um, so that didn't, you know, we're all still alive, but now there's a big uh, gap or break in the supply chain, and then lumber prices are like 30, 40% higher right now, so I can't do nothing. I'm just sitting here sitting on this piece of property I can't build anything. I can't start right now. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, it's hard to really plan and know what's going to happen with materials a month from now or three months from right. now too. Yeah. So. Yeah. I just partnered with another guy on a lot we bought to do a, a three, two bedroom house. And he just got the lumber, <laughs> lumber price back this morning. He said, man, we're going to have to wait a couple months. Uh, Cause it's just, it's just so inflated right now. Hmm. So we have to talk about at least one of your deals specifically because I saw some awesome videos you did on uh, the, the 48 hour yeah. rehab. <laughs> yeah, 48 hour rehab challenge. Yeah, which at first I thought was really impressive when I thought it was a seven day rehab and then you yeah. <laughs> corrected me and were like, no, it was 48 hours. I was like, yeah, I had to correct what? you on that because you was like yeah. seven day rehab. I'm like, no, no, I'm just having just trouble wrapping my head around how you do a rehab in 48 hours. It, it was hard, but I mean, we did it. Well, we didn't, but because, you know, COVID, of course, was there. I ordered the cat. This is what happened. I went into Lowe's. I bought the cabinets. Well, this one, the, the lady was busy. Usually I, get, I, get, I had a drawing of my space, the cabinets. I was going to go in and give it to the lady. She's going to tell me what I need. Well, she had like two or three customers because everybody, COVID was here. So everybody's doing all these remodels at home and she had a line of people. And I was like, Man, I don't have time to wait for this. So I'm like, I'm, I'll just pick this stuff out myself. I got the 12 inch, I got the 18 inch bottoms, tops, whatever, sink, 36 inch base sink cabinet. I had it all picked out. I was like, man, I got this. So I get it, take it to the, to the rehab. You know, the, my painters, we started at 8 a.m. one morning. Uh, we ripped out the carpet, cabinets, everything within, I think, an hour, hour and a half. Um, it's on my video. Yeah, so take us through what the deal was, because I think a lot of people probably think you can't do a 48-hour rehab. So it must have just been touch up the paint and you know, something really simple, put a couple bushes and mulch out front or something. Yeah, no, it was, what was um, the actual rehab or the actual deal. New flooring, new carpet, new LVP, uh, new cabinets, install it. The, the, this duplex I've got, they do not, these two, uh, these four units, there's two duplexes. That one particular unit does not have a dishwasher. So we added a dishwasher. Uh, brand new stove, brand new dishwasher, brand new cabinets, brand new countertop, brand new sink, brand new faucets, brand new vanity uh, in the bathroom, brand new toilet, uh, brand new lights throughout the whole place, ceiling fan, uh, paint, and flooring. So that was the rehab. 
and a, a new grid for the back uh, back door, which was busted for the for the back door. Um, oh, and new electrical sockets throughout the whole thing because for some reason this unit had all black sockets. So I had an electrician come in and put all new white sockets and new white face plates. So that was what we did. It's pretty much everything cosmetic. Yeah, cosmetic. Yeah, there was no damage, you know. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, new carpet, new LVP. Uh, we come in, like I say, took all the carpet out, um, flooring, the, the, it had linoleum. Uh, cabinets had it all ripped out um, and my painters come in was prepping while I was ripping everything else out. Okay. I done ripping everything out. They had a few more hours of prepping and they said, all right, I, <laughs> you know, you gotta have a, have a good team. Teamwork makes the dream work. So these painters, uh, they were prepping and I'm like, dude, I got, I said, guys, I'm done. Um, you guys want me to help you? They was like, no, we got it. I said, all right, you can't leave, man. We're on a 48 hour challenge and I'm videoing this and I'm putting it out there to everybody. And I thought, no, man, we got it, we got it. And they did it. You know, they prepped and painted. They left, I think, uh, 9.30, 10 p.m. that night. And uh, so paint dried next morning, come in the next day. Um, the, let's see, the, the uh, flooring guys were there. So they started laying the LVP. As soon as they started doing that, in the kitchen, they got done with that. I moved in and started hanging cabinets. And so they went on with their stuff and uh, having one of my guys hanging lights that was helping me. I mean, it worked out. Everything went, worked out good, except for right there at the end, I missed a cabinet on my list and it was a corner piece. And I tried to go back. I ran back to Lowe's to get it and they didn't have it. And I said, well, I said, we well, check the other Lowe's because we had two other Lowe's that I could drive to. And no one had it. She said, I don't know when we're going to get it. Probably been another two to four weeks. I was like, oh, this ain't going to work. <laughs> it's like, man, I messed up. Uh, they, they had had one the previous day, but somebody bought it. <laughs> oh. So, so we, it would have been done in 48 hours, no problem, if I would have bought that right piece that first day. So without, without that piece, you, you don't have the cabinets fully set and you don't have the counter. Was there anything else not done? No, everything, well, the counter, I couldn't put it on because I didn't have that piece. Right. Um, yeah. So everything, everything was done. Lot, everything's done. That's awesome. I mean. And, you know, we did the final cool. video and I told everybody, you know, I messed up. <laughs> yeah. So what do you think? You know, so many people really struggle with the rehab. Yeah. Even the cosmetic rehab. Um, and I think it gets drug out you know, waiting, you know, you got this guy waiting for this guy and you're trying to coordinate contractors for you to have it nailed down in that tight a time frame, And you still involved multiple people, you know, you had your painters, your floors, your electrician, your plumber. What would, yeah. you know, what do you think were the, some of the keys to being able to do that? Just staying on them. Uh, Communication, as my wife calls it, <laughs> good communication skills. <laughs> yeah, so good communication with everybody. I, you know, I called them like two days before. I said, "Hey, you guys ready for this?" Um, everybody's like, "Yeah, man, we're we're ready. We're pumped." You know. Um, so yeah, good communication skills. That's what got it done, and everybody showed up on time. Everybody showed up when they said. Were any of these contractors you'd never used before? Uh, the flooring guys. I've used the, you know, where we buy our flooring, I use them all the time, but I told that guy, I said, look, we're doing a video. And he was like, oh man, that's great. And I said, so your guys have to be there. Don't tell, you know, please don't tell me to be there or not. And he said, no, no, we got you scheduled. We got you scheduled. And so, yeah, it worked out. That's awesome. Yeah. And that one was a uh, one that you held as a rental? Yes, we still have that, yeah. Yeah, yeah and that, you know, the value add, I, I got to talk about the value add on that. So that, they were renting for four, that one unit was renting for four, when we bought it was rent, I think 425, 450. All right, so we go in and rehab the whole thing. Now we're getting 800. So, wow. You know, it's just a big difference. I mean, the guy that used to own it, he's an old guy and, you know, he just didn't, wasn't keeping up with the times of rentals. So yeah, we redid that whole unit and it's rent for 800 now. Yeah, that's a huge difference. 
Yeah, that's a big deal. Yeah. <laughs> so what were the what would be the numbers on that deal? You know, did you just buy it and, and rehabbed it after the purchase or had you owned it a while? No, we, we bought it back in uh, February of this year. Okay. We closed on it first part of February, I think. Um, had to go do a cash for keys. Um, Cause the guy owned it, he, he was an old man. He's in his eighties. Uh, this lady wasn't paying them. Um, so I did a cash for keys cause courts closed. She took it um, and she got out, went in there. And so then we set it up like that. And how much did you end up putting in it with the rehab? I think it was close to, I need to go back and look cause I had some other projects going on too. I think that one was eight or nine, eight or 9,000. That's really good. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I want to, it's, uh, yeah, one of those two numbers. Sure. And what's your, how do you like to do the financing? Are you going to refinance it and try and get that money back out? Do you like to leave it in? Well, we bought those with private money. And so, yeah, we're refinancing those out. Actually, no, I take that back. I'm getting them mixed up with those other two. <laughs> we, uh, so like I said, the market's so hot. So we paid, I forget, 147 for those. Uh, I think, yeah, 147 for both of those. So that was a really good price. This guy was just one. I feel bad for the guy. He lost his wife and then he, I don't know, but you know, he named his price. Well, so yeah. So I rehabbed that unit and then the guy made it up. Uh, we, we put them on the market later on, just about a month ago, actually, just to see. And uh, we got full price asking, I think it was 258. My wife handles that part. Wow. So we're gonna sell those and move that money to another county over the state line. Those are in Tennessee. We do a lot of stuff in Georgia. Uh, so we're moving that money to some other projects I've got going in Georgia. Okay, sure. All right. So now I got to ask about private money since you brought that up. Yeah. So, <laughs> so you, you funded deals with private money as well? Yes. Okay. So everybody wants to know what that initial conversation was like with a uh, private lender. Uh, it was easy for us actually. Um, Cause we had a, we got a really good friend that he was using him. And I was like, I, t I kept saying, you know, we need to find our own private lender because we have a home uh, HELOC on our house. Our house was paid for. That's a totally another story too <laughs> on our house, but that our house is paid for. So we got a home equity line of credit on our house. So on our rehabs and stuff, we use our own money out of that to rehab the houses. Um, so yeah, the private money guy, we had used him through another person doing some flips. And then we were trying to do some stuff on our own. And he was like, man, just use, just call, call our guy, Charlie, just you, just call him. So we called him and I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's the women or the men, but when I call him, he's like, Hey, let me call you back. You know, but when my wife, my wife calls him, he's like, Hey, Hey, hey how are you? <laughs> <laughs> so if it's an old guy, I recommend your wife call. <laughs> That's why your wife's talking about that communication skills, right? Yeah, communication skills. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So was it, uh, you know, it sounds like he does a lot of private lending. He's yeah, he, he, yes, he, he does a lot of, lot of lending, yes. Okay. So what, for him, he, what did he use to vet you? Or, or how did he decide to lend to you? I, I don't know. I've never asked. <laughs> did he want to know the like your experience as an investor or just the, yeah, he, well, he knew we had some experience. He knew that uh, from our other friend, Mike, he knew we had experience. Uh, he knew my wife's been in real estate for so long. Uh, so the other guy vouched for us. So that really helped. And then once we did a couple of deals, he's like, yeah, they, they know what they're doing. You know? Sure. And is it long-term or uh, one year? One year? We to, yeah, we have to refinance it with one year. Uh, no payment for one year. Uh, payback, it's amortized over one year. Uh, pay it back when, when, when we sell or refinance. It's awesome. Yeah. I love the no payment. 
Yeah, I mean, that really helps us out a lot. So we can use our money and just keep it rolling and uh, get the stuff done and not worry about having to, you know, make this payment to somebody. Especially when you're doing the rehab and you're doing work on it and it's not yes. bringing in any money. Um, that's frustrating to me to have to keep making the monthly payment. I like having that no payment. Um, yeah, and we're looking for another lender also, private money, um, just to have just in case, you know, cause it's COVID. We didn't know he, he actually come down with COVID. We actually come down with COVID, my wife and I. Really? Uh, yeah, we had it back in July and our lender had it back um, in June and he's early eighties, late seventies, early eighties. So it's like, man, if he was to pass, you know, I, for, for one, that's a bad thing in itself. Um, but then it's like, what, what do we do now? So, you know, I'm kind of, I need to find just enough, you know, just to have, yeah. Yeah. I was, I never want to be dependent on any one person or institution or right. whatever. So. And I like building relationships with these guys too. It's fun. You know, this guy that we, that lends to us, he's been doing real estate since the seventies. And wow. so when you, sit, when you sit down and talk to him, he's just like, he's just a golden book of knowledge. <laughs> and sure. How, yeah. what's that relationship like? How often do you talk to him or do you report to him or? Uh, you know, we, we've had lunch with him a couple of times. He is a very busy, busy person. Even at his age, he is busy. So you're on the phone, you tell him your deal, send him pictures or maybe he'll come look at it. He'll meet you. Uh, and then you get off the phone. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> he's moving on. Huh? Yeah, he's moving. Yeah. Not sure. And so what do you, what financing do you prefer at this stage? Are you, do you like the bank funding, using the HELOC, private money? What's your preference? I like the private and using our HELOC. Um, you know, and I've got a very good relationship with, well, we both do, Melissa and I do, with our local bank. I've had a checking account there since I was 16. So, you know, I'm 44. So since I was 16, I mean, it's just a bank. It's a community or hometown bank, you know, so I can just go in there and say, hey, we're doing this, this. Well, let's write, you know, look it up, write it up. I can do it for this interest rate, whatever, you know. So I've, I've got a great relationship. They know me. They know my family. They know us. They know our work ethic. They know, you know, they know we're solid. Yeah. I think that goes a long way. Private yeah. lender, bank, whatever, you know, it, that relationship and them knowing your character and your yeah. experience really goes a long way. So, and what kinds of things, you know, what kinds of things are you working towards now? What are uh, you moving forward? Well, with COVID, it's really hard to say. Or this election, I don't know, whatever you want to call it, this craziness in the world, because lumber prices are too high for me to build right now. Um, people are supposed to be dropping off like fly, flies with COVID. Um, so I don't, I, you know, I don't know what's the future. Are there any kind of eviction <laughs> restrictions where you're at or in your market or anything like that, or say that again, do you have any kind of, uh, eviction restrictions or, you know, where you tend to not right now. Okay. Yeah. No, like I said, Melissa just went to court this morning for an eviction. She, oh, that's right. That's yeah, she didn't want to pay, and I don't know. There, there could be drugs involved. I don't know. But, yeah, so she's got seven days to get out, so. Yeah, people do odd things. You never know <laughs> what they're going to do, right? Yeah. So what would you like to see? Let's say everything with COVID smooths out in the next few months. I'd like to see these lumber prices go down so I can start my apartment build. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. Sure. And the apartment building, you said it was 24 units that you 26. 26. Yeah. Is that one building or what's that? No, it's uh six buildings. Um and it's on 3 acres. Six buildings on 3 acres. I've got I've got all the renderings there at the office. Uh it is they're all two bedroom, one bath, 840 square feet each. Uh nine foot ceilings. Uh, we're going to do some board and batten vinyl in the front with brick, like uh, I forget how far up, three or four foot up. So they're going to be really nice, paved, all paved. 
pay parking. And what's the, I mean, I've never dealt with anything like that building a 26 unit complex. What's the financing like for that? Financing is not com, uh, completed yet, but they do. Well, I'll tell you what the, the words were because we were right in the middle of doing the financing right when COVID hit and then the bank kind of just shut down on that. Said, hey, we got to wait. Um, we were doing, let's see, it was 20 years, but the first, or what they do is construction loan. And you got uh, nine, let's see, nine months, uh, so much interest, interest only payments. I'm trying to think in my head, sorry. Nine months, interest only payments, and then it rolls over into a note. And then it's on a full, on interest only payments on what you borrow. After nine months, it rolls into a, a interest only payments for one year on the full amount. Hmm. So that's how that works. Sure. And actually requested for uh, 12 months interest only on one to borrow and then roll it into one more year of interest only on the full amount. And we never did get approval on that because we just kind of halted. When you're ready. You know, I'm up negotiating with my banker. <laughs> yeah. You know, I tell him what I want and he tells me what he can do. So, I've never done that either. What's that like yeah. negotiating with the banker? It, does he have the final say? Is he presenting yeah. your thing he's, to the board above him? What's that like? Yeah, he has a board and he's vice president and the president above him, you know, I, they, they both have a really good relationship. Um, they, he, you know, they gave me the thumbs up on everything. They do have to take it to a board because it's over a certain amount. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, you know, I tell John that John is my banker uh, and he likes cheap beer. <laughs> so I say, man, I'll bring you a 12 pack of beer. Just give me this 3% interest rate. He said, I, yeah. <laughs> and, uh, you know, we cut up like that. So That's uh, yeah, that's money well spent on that 12 pack. That's for sure. Yeah. <laughs> uh, sure. Going, that goes right back to your relationship again. You know? Yeah, it's relationship. relationship. Yeah. I mean, like I say, he knows me. Uh, I built my first house through them, you know, the house I currently live in. So, I mean, they know me. That's great. So, I mean, you have done a whole bunch of different things. And looking at your story, it's interesting that you do single family, you do multifamily, you do rentals, you do flips, you've done mobile homes, you're looking and planning to build apartments and you've been involved in all these different aspects of real estate for somebody yeah. who is struggling with just taking that first step into any one of those areas, what advice would you give for that person just wanting to get started? Uh, just, just start <laughs> just, you know, cause, well, I, I, that kind of reminds me of a story that I was talking to the guy yesterday evening. Uh, we had a meetup last week in Chattanooga. And I had, I have two friends that want to get into real estate. So, you know, I'm, I'm sure the other one had some stuff he had to do for real, you know, but you know, it's like, look, I, we've been planning this meetup for a month now, whatever. And, you know, I'm by these, these two guys cause they want to get in real estate, but one shows up and one doesn't. So, you know, who made the first step? It's the guy that showed up. And well, the guy that showed up, he's like, man, I didn't know anybody. I don't know what questions to ask. I was like, dude, you just got to keep coming to these things. Just keep coming to them, meet this guy, meet that person, meet that lady, go say, hey, can I take you to lunch? Or can I come visit your flip? Can I come visit your rehab? Can I come visit your new construction and look around? Just, you know, just insert, purposely insert yourself in whatever they, they are doing is the way I do it. So, you know, whatever this guy's doing, say, hey, can I come visit or can I come question you or whatever, you know, just do something. That, that's, you know, if, if someone's starting out, don't overthink it. Just get out there and start talking and networking and uh, visit some of these construction sites or rehab sites. Um, if you have any, and I have a lot of skills from my past from, you know, so I can do, run drills, saws, whatever. I can do anything. Um, some of these guys don't and I understand that. So you need to kind of find a way what, what works for you and get with some uh, contractors, uh, learn who the contractors are. Uh, cause you don't want to get screwed cause you will get screwed if you don't know who you're dealing with. Um, so learn the contractors, the painters, the plumbers, the electricians, 
just just purposely insert yourself in, in with these people. That's awesome. I think, you know, a lot of that comes from networking too. If you're yeah. in with a bunch of investors in your market, you'll, you'll hear about the people who you shouldn't work with or yeah. you'll hear yeah. about who's getting cheated yeah. by who and who didn't finish a job and, and yeah. all of that. So, and I think it's great advice too, to just take that first step, just show up to the meeting. Yeah, just show up. Talk yeah. to the, to the guy who's renovating the house down the street you don't have to know how it's all going to pan out or, you know, yeah. how the whole thing will come together. Just take that first step and, and keep moving forward. So I think that's great encouragement for people. Yeah. So for you, you've been doing this 20 years, 20 plus years involved in real estate one way or another. Yeah. <laughs> and you can see, I mean, you're just involved in a whole bunch of things and have, you know, big goals that you're working towards. What is it for you? What is that why that really drives you and gets you up in the morning, you know, excited and pushing forward? Oh, yeah. I don't know. Something about it. I just love it. I've always loved it, but I've never took it serious. Um, something about, you know, I've, not, not political, not being political. You know, I don't know who, who your fans are or whatever, what their political beliefs are, but I read Donald Trump's book, Art of the Deal, when I was 18 years old. And that sparked something in me to like, you know, I kind of like this, but I was working in my dad's business and he wanted me to go his direction. So he pulled me his direction and, you know, I went that way and I realized later on in life, that's not really what I want to do. So I left his company in 2011 and just went out on my own and just started figuring stuff out and started junk clean dumpster rental. And then, uh, then we started getting serious in the real estate. And so, yeah, I mean, I just, I just love it. When I get up in the morning, that's what Melissa and I talk about. <laughs> and if she gets up before me, I'll go in there and look, she's on the computer looking at real estate. And <laughs> just what we do. I, we just love it. That's awesome. Yeah. Well, I'm very few people. Or, you, you know, that is a, a true blessing to be able to do every day what you love. Yeah, and it's, you know, when you do a flip, like my wife did a flip a while back, I wouldn't touch that flip, and I told her I wouldn't touch that flip. <laughs> she bought this house. This house was like, I would have burned it down or bulldozed it something. I would you know, <laughs> She's like, no, I can fix this. I'm like, listen, you are crazy. And uh, she's like, no, I'm going to buy this house. If I said, don't put my name on it. <laughs> and she did. <laughs> She, she went and bought the house and uh, and she did an amazing job. I mean, that house, as soon as it went on the market, within four hours, she had a full price contract. Or I think they were asking. It was full price. But anyway, within four hours, it was under contract. And she did such a great job. And uh, I mean, she, you know, she, in her own right, she's amazing at what she does. That's awesome. Yeah. Did you hear and I told you so in there at all or? Uh, no, I told her she told me so. <laughs> <laughs> you jumped the gun. You knew it was coming sooner or yeah. later, right? <laughs> yeah. I, I, I jumped ahead of that one. <laughs> <laughs> well, sure. So for people who want to see more about all the different deals you're working on in your business and Melissa's projects as well, what what's a good way for them to... Uh, be in touch with you or follow up with you? Uh, just Facebook. You know, I'm on Facebook. She's on Facebook. She doesn't, she's not on there as much as I am, but she does post some of her stuff. Um, but yeah, I'm on Facebook, Ryan Faircloth. And um, I mean, if you need my number, 423-779-6918. Awesome. And when we always like, you know, have people call me or message me and they're coming through town who've seen, you know, some of my rehabs or whatever, or the 48 hour challenge and thought that was pretty cool. And they come up to, from Florida or whatever, and they, they hit me up and we go to lunch. Um, <clears throat> so, you know, I'm always up for lunch or anything. That's I'm great. a smart guy, but what I do know, I can share with you. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, that's great. And I would definitely encourage anybody, reach out to Ryan, um, follow him, friend, and watch those videos. You're going to like the 48-hour rehab videos. And... Uh, I think be impressed with the process and challenged by whether you could do it or not. And yeah. 
Yeah. You need a dumpster rental like or want to know how to, how to uh, build a dumpster rental company, reach out to you, right? Yeah. Well, we're sell, selling franchises, so. Well, there you go. Yeah. That is a great way to start a dumpster rental company. Yeah. So definitely reach out to Ryan for that. So I really appreciate you coming on, sharing your story, and uh, appreciate the insights and encouragement you, you shared with everybody today. We yeah, definitely yeah, got it. We got to jump back on later and I got to hear about the student housing and the 26 unit apartment. And yeah, give me about three months on that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. It's a deal. All right. All right. Thanks again. Yeah, thanks for having me. Yeah, definitely. See you.